then take my pen and close it. <laughs> The track is Sipoku Mete, Faces and Places. My name is Toti Togozani. It's that time, five minutes past six. We've been talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in tonight's show, um, I'll be not playing my playlist, not the station's playlist, not the head of music's playlist, but my guest's playlist. Who's my guest? I'm hosting the internationally acclaimed metamedician. He was born in Butter Scroll, outside Ladies Meet in Guazul Natal. He completed his matric at St. Chad's High School, a boarding school in Ladies Meet. He completed his PSC, PSC honors and master's degrees in mathematics at the University of Fort Hare. In 1986, he had a brief stint at the University of Zuland as a junior lecturer in the <laughs> Department of Mathematics before accepting an Educational Opportunities Council EOC scholarship to pursue doctoral studies in mathematics in Pennsylvania State University in the United States of America. After completing his PhD in 1992, he was offered and he accepted lectureship at the University of Cape Town. He rose through the academic ranks at the University of Cape Town until he became an associate professor and a deputy head of the Department of Pure and Applied Mathematics. In 2004, he was offered the chair and headship of the Department of Mathematics at Rhodes University. He also received numerous academic awards and recognition, including the honorary membership of the Golden Key International Honor Society, Pennsylvania State University Share Fellowship, and FRD, NRF, C rating. In 2010, he was appointed by the Minister of Basic Education, the Honorable uh, Minister Engie Mutseha, as the chairperson of the Council of Umalusi. In November 2014, he was appointed as the sixth principal of Rhodes University and the vice chancellor of this university, Rhodes University. He is married to Petua Matutu. The couple has two children, Zamandoni and Zinzile. This is no one else but Dr. Susan Mabuzela. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, uh, Tugozani, and uh, good evening to the listeners of RMR. It's the nice. best station, by the way. The best station in Grahamstown, yeah, and yeah. we are growing big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, first, I, I, I grew up. I will take a spoon, talk to myself, and imitate big guys in radio like Colin Kuala and so forth. And when I was uh, reading and doing my research on you, I find maths, 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 maths. How did you know that you have to be a mathematician? <laughs> well, Tugazan, that's a lovely question. Uh, but before I respond to it, um, now that you have mentioned uh, Mr. Kuala, uh, he is going through a difficult time. Um, he is battling with the colon cancer. And Kolani has been an absolutely wonderful, and is an absolutely wonderful uh, journalist and presenter, so we wish him well, and uh, we wish him full and complete uh, recovery. How did I know I wanted to do mathematics? I've enjoyed mathematics from, from the beginning, from primary school. Uh, it, it's a subject that I found very interesting and very engaging and very challenging, and I also had good teachers who uh, were wonderful role models. But it's a subject that came naturally, and uh, I, I was always fascinated with it. I couldn't stop solving problems. And of course, uh, what I love most about it is that uh, it, it instills in you the most important uh, skill of thinking logically and uh, arguing with cogency. And one thing that mathematics disabuses you of is to make claims and statements without substantiating it. No. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But you are at Rhodes University. Yes. We are well known of social sciences courses. Yeah. We are the best journalism, politics, sociology. 
and you are the vice chancellor. Yeah. So whenever anything happens, you need to engage with your colleagues and the students. Yeah. Don't you find it difficult to engage with the students and your colleagues who are more versed in social sciences as a mathematician? It is interesting. Um, it is challenging. Um, as I've said, one of the things that uh, we learn in mathematics is to provide evidence for whatever claims that we make, and that cannot be said of humanities and social sciences. In mathematics, you either can prove the statement or you can provide an appropriate authority for it. So it is very interesting because quite often one comes across people in social and sciences and humanities who would make statements uh, we, without substantiating them, and I find that extremely frustrating at times, but I've become accustomed to it and I respect and love all uh, disciplines, particularly uh, social sciences and humanities, because uh, if we do not produce more people who are in social sciences and humanities, we may end up producing robots who yeah. are very competent in producing uh, high level science, but are very bad in, in interaction with other people. Yeah. Yeah. One of uh, journalism lecturers by the name of Dashebi yeah. asked me to ask you this question by the way. So <laughs> you can have a say in tonight's show by calling 046-603-8847. If you are at any office within Rhodes University campus, just dial the extension 8847. It will come through. Mm -hmm. Or you can dial the extension 7063. It will come through to our producer and then will transfer you to me. But something that gave me goosebumps yesterday when you sent that playlist to me is that two of the songs in your eight songs you sent to me were already in the list. It gave me goosebumps. Uh -huh. it, I still can't believe it, but for a listener at home, please do not go away. We will be not playing anyone else's playlist but Dr. Sizwa Mabizela's playlist. So if you want to know what kind of music he listened to, his gem, do not go anywhere. But let me ask, if you didn't become a mathematician or study mathematics, what would you have studied? I probably would have studied law. Um, the reason there is quite simple. Um, in the early 80s, when we were busy fighting apartheid and uh, having lots of people being arrested, we all dreamt of being human rights lawyers. So I probably would have been a, a lawyer, a human rights lawyer, uh, and many of us were inspired uh, by uh, uh, many, many people who were human rights lawyers. Uh, and so I probably would have been. Alternatively, uh, believe it or not, I would have been a Catholic priest. <laughs> I wow. study uh, theology. I would have studied theology and I would have remained celibate and uh, I would be a Catholic priest. Yeah. There, there are some dots connecting now because yeah. I'm still going to ask. Yeah. You, you, you give a lot, but we're still coming to that question. Because to tell my listeners, I've got a surprise for the Vice Chancellor half past six so you may be cooking you may be driving but make sure half past six turn your volume high at half past six park the car and i'll be giving or playing i, I, I don't know what's the surprises but i'll be surprising him with something at half past six so <laughs> do not go anywhere you can miss the first half of the show but half past six i got a special surprise for him okay. moving on uh, just, just before we, yeah. we, we move on uh, again, uh, there are some very important human rights lawyers who were very prominent uh, in the early 80s. Uh, people like uh, Mamu Victoria Mtainga, uh, people like uh, Dadu Griffiths Mtainga, and, and those are the people that we, we looked up to. And, and they are the ones who 
were an incredible inspiration during those dark days. Uh, not to mention, um, others are still alive, but uh, we all wanted to be human rights lawyers. Yeah? That's, that's great to hear. Yeah. From your observation, you were for here, just yes. here in Eastern Cape. Yes. Tell us what's different uh, during your time, 1980s and now, Rose, when you look at Rose University getting out of your office or coming in, looking at the student, what's this thing, even watching the news, that makes tertiary education environment at that time different from this one? Well, there has been a huge change. Uh, when time came for me to go to university, uh, I couldn't go to a university like Rhodes. I couldn't go to any white university. Uh, if I wanted to, I would have to get uh, a special permission from a government minister. And that permission did not come easily. They would grant you one if you wanted to pursue uh, degree qualifications that were not offered in, in black universities. So if I wanted to study pharmacy or journalism, I would have come to Rhodes. Or if I wanted to do engineering or medicine, I would have gone to other white universities. So there has been a huge, a huge change. So there's greater access. It's open now to every person. A any person can go to any university of their choice. Uh, and I think, I think that is important. Uh, of course, uh, there are challenges of access in terms of funding and the like, but uh, we have done away with the kind of discrimination that was part of the apartheid system. Uh, so uh, I think that is something that we need to celebrate. We still have a long way to go, uh, but it's something that is, that is not insignificant. Wow. As a parent, you are a parent of two daughters. Yes. What is that one thing? You see, as the youth, as kids, we think we are cool, we think we are in the right track. Yeah. But as a parent, what is that one advice would you like to give everyone listening right now? That youth, you think you are in the right track, but I am sorry, I need to tell you, you are not. Well, Chobozana, this is not just uh, this current youth, it is something that happens with every generation. Um, youth tends to be very contemptuous. Uh, of what the previous generations achieved and they tend to um, look down upon that and they think that they are the ones who will be able to do more and I think that is that is not entirely bad because it's about youthful idealism uh, but what has been worrying me with this current youth in particular is the glorification and the romanticization of violence, uh, which I find extremely difficult to to accept, uh, more so in a society uh, which has been shaped in a very significant way by violence. I think the current generation resorts to violence fairly quickly. And of course, the this generation uh, is a bit more self-centered. You see, uh, sorry to <laughs> cut you off, but there's a caller that is calling in. Yeah. And I would like this caller, if you are listening, to take your call after half past six. All right. Can I do that? Okay, let, let me hear what um, the person is saying. Okay, just... Okay, please try, uh, try, please try again calling, um, but we will be taking your calls uh, after half past six after the surprise because uh, I want us to deal with the content that we already prepared. South Africa, uh, Dr. Mabizan, I think it's gone down. A uh, lot of things are not coming fine. Things are not good. I listen to news bulletins, I listen to radio more than anything else yeah. and every bulletin and it worries me. I hear that someone, a big politician, has died in case and everyday politicians are dying. Makana municipality mm -hmm. just bought a newspaper beginning of the week last week and uh, Makana municipality has put, put again on administration. That's what is happening. Last year we recorded 6,000 plus protests in South Africa, making us the capital country of protest. Mm -hmm. I think we've got leadership crisis from the lower level to national level. What do you think, if I'm wrong, what 
the cause of all this what we are facing? Well, look, um, what we are witnessing is uh, a spectacular failure of leadership. Um, we are witnessing untrammeled greed, completely unrestrained greed all around. Uh, we are witnessing malfeasance um, among those who are supposed to be providing services to to our communities. Uh, by the way, um, in 2015, uh, I gave a graduation address. Um, in that address, I pointed out that uh, we had elevated two positions of uh, leadership, people of questionable moral and ethical character, uh, people who had no sense of what was right or wrong, people who had no sense of what was moral and immoral, people who had no sense of uh, what was ethical and what was unethical. Um, so it was quite a hard-hitting um, address that I gave. And needless to say, uh, some politicians came down on me quite hard, and they came to see me, and uh, particularly from, uh, uh, from the African National Congress. I did not mention anyone's name, mm. but it was quite interesting to, re to note that they felt that my address was um, directed, directed to towards them. them. And so they sent some high-powered politicians to have a word with me, and I engaged them. Uh, two years later, those very same people are now bemoaning the kind of leadership that we have. And so it's one of the tragedies of our country, and in my view, a betrayal. A betrayal of a very noble, uh, a very noble struggle that had been prosecuted and for which so many paid the supreme price, only to have a country which is uh, in a in really a lamentable state. Uh, the resources are looted, uh, mm. and you have a parallel structure running government, and you, we have read about all kinds of corruption in our um, state-owned enterprises, and if you realize just how deep the whole network is, it's absolutely frightening. Yeah. But yeah. of course, the main losers are the poor in the and the marginalized in our communities because resources which are meant to uplift them are diverted to uh, support the opulence of the few. And that is the biggest tragedy. You saw it coming. Many of us saw it coming a long time ago. Um, and so we, we are not surprised. What I, I find somewhat uh, confusing and, and, and it just does not make sense. The society has not risen up to say this far and no further. And so these people have become very brazen in, in stealing and in looting the resources of this country. Yeah. That is the tragedy. And I, as I say, there are just so many people who... Dee, 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 dee. Ah! <laughs> I had to put it on because we are near half past six. So. That uh, Cesaria Ivara yeah. fatally died. <laughs> what was wrong? Which is so nice. <laughs> so now I'm opening calls. Uh, you can call in. It's half past six. But I want to play the surprise that I have for you. Are you ready for the surprise? Yes. Are you ready for yes. the surprise? <laughs> Do you like surprises? Yep. <laughs> We're still having the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Sizo Mabizela, and you are listening to RMR 89.7 FM. You can call in to be part of the show on 046-603-8847. I'll be reading your WhatsApp towards the end of uh, this show. You can WhatsApp us on 065-277-4173. Right now, let's play the surprise. It's really about what will be in this radio station at this time. So I wanted to pass this message. Uh, there's a quote that you used to say, which says, Each day presents us with an opportunity 
to be a blessing in someone's life so don't waste it uh, and you've been a blessing to me to the community and to the family um, in other ways you practice what you preach uh, you are the reason why i'm here at Rhodes, and you continue doing great things for me uh, i really appreciate you um, you support me through thick and thin uh, you are the person that I admire and there's a lot of people who also admires you so keep on being a blessing to our lives thank you <laughs> that's lovely I'm calling on demand and demand I'm calling on demand and 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 I'm calling on demand <laughs> wow, how do you feel about that? It's wonderful. Um, this is a young man. Um, this is my nephew. And, um, yeah, he is someone that uh, I love very much and uh, he has come through great difficulties and um, he will make a success of himself and um, I, I really, let me just tell you this. Uh, those who might have been born in, uh, in shakes but shakes were not born in their minds and they are prepared to, to rise above adversities and so, and he's one of many in this university who have defied who have defied circumstances that would have pulled them down. There's another young woman who, uh, who is also studying here. She was uh, employed as a domestic worker and she had a dream and she wanted to be a pharmacist. Yeah. And we arranged for her to come to Rose and she came here. She has never repeated a single year. She has never failed a course. She is doing her final year this year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. These are people who really inspire me greatly. So that was the surprise. Wow. <laughs> I went deep. <laughs> I got your card. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, no, no. yeah. Thank you. That, that is very special. Yeah. That is true. Thank you very special. much. I appreciate that, no, Doctor. No. Thank, thanks for going that extra mile and um, as I said uh, these are the young people who inspire me uh, and and I think there, there are many many and I see many of them coming to my office yeah. and they say young man young woman you have no reason to feel sorry for yourself you have an opportunity make the most of it and many of them do yeah well but this, as I was big newspaper that wrote about this, but let me take this caller now. Hi. Hi, hello to the lady. You're speaking to Lunga from DBS. Sure, sure, Lunga. What question do you have for the uh, vice chancellor? <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I'm just wondering, sir, as a VC, you've gone through, you stayed the university under some difficult circumstances. Um, we've had an RU reference list protest. We've had fees must fall in both 2015 and 2016 and I, I can imagine that being the VC of the university under those circumstances must have been hard. Um, so my question is, during those difficult times, has the thought of quitting ever crossed your mind? And if so... No, the thought, the thought of quitting has never crossed my mind. Um, the issues that have been raised by our students in, in both the protests pertaining to Fees Must Fall and the uh, RU reference list, those are important issues. Uh, and in a very real sense, I'm very proud of our students because they elevated and brought to the national consciousness the important issue of sexual and gender-based violence. What perhaps I could not agree with insofar as the RU reference list is concerned was the use of violence. 
uh, which we, we witnessed. We were not on opposite ends on those issues. We have to address issues of sexual and gender-based violence in our institution and, um, and in our society more broadly. So what really broke my heart there uh, and is that there was violence and we were forced to take out an interdict. And that was perhaps the most painful decision I had ever had to make as a vice chancellor. Uh, again, if you go back to my own time at university in the 80s, we were fighting police um, on our campus. Uh, we were getting arrested and uh, we were getting, uh, you know, we were kicked out of university and so on. Yeah. And so I could never bring myself up to uh, consenting to the police coming on campus. And then, and then it's something that I, I, I was, I mean, had to be done, unfortunately. I'll come back to FISMAS 4. Yeah, let's take this one. Hi, welcome to Arimar. Hello, hi, how are you? We are good, and how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, this is uh, Dean, and uh, hello to you, Dr. Mabuzela. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Very well, thank you, and how are you? I'm all, I'm all. My question, my question, I'm a musician, so I would like to know you in terms of music. I've, I've heard earlier on that you were playing a bit of Caribbean music and stuff like that. So in recent years, uh, is there any other like music genre that you relate to? Do you listen to such, such a music, like hip hop or reggae or anything like that? Well, I, I normally relax with uh, jazz and, and blues. And you, you listen to uh, that song from Cape Verde, uh, which has a beautiful rhythm, but of, of course, uh, music from uh, the Caribbean is very much similar to that. So I, I love that. Um, so if I really want to relax, I, I listen to blues and. Uh, yeah. You wanna just tell uh, Vanyana what do you do when you wanna dance? What sort of music do you listen to? I I, t I tell you I can dance. I can, you don't want to see me dancing because <laughs> wow. because I, I, I wherever I have been I, I, I I'm, I've been really getting down wow okay um, I'm gonna shoot a video of him dancing that's a problem is he said it himself that he can dance I'm gonna let him dance <laughs> But I don't know how he's gonna dance with faces and places and stimuli and so on. But yeah, thank you for calling. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Sure. Wow. Yes, they are speaking to you. You can also do the same if you wanna be part of the show. Zero four six six zero three eight eight four seven. This is a lifetime opportunity. To in 2015, when you were saying your inaugural address, you dedicated your speech to. Victoria Ndange to Steve Biko. Why these three? You Bantu Biko, Mlungis Mlungis Mtange, and Victoria Nonyama Zerumtange. Why these three? Both of these are a product of this part of the country. Um, if you drive to King Williamstown, you will see the graves of Mlungi Simtenga and Victoria Mtenga on your right. And if you drive further down, you will get to the grave of Bandu Stephen Biko. And all these three people have made an incredible contribution to, to this country. I've already mentioned uh, Victoria and Griffith Simtenga who were human rights lawyers. Uh, and they were a huge inspiration to to many of us, and and so uh, it was important that I dedicate the my um, inaugural to them because they were a huge inspiration. They come from this part of the world, and of course, Stephen Mantubiko uh, is someone who is very well known. And uh, you, if you know your history, um, it was here at Rhodes that Sasso was born. Yes. Um, and he and his comrades were not allowed to use the residences of Rhodes University. 
And so they had to go to the township. And that was the birth of the Black Consciousness Movement. And wow. his arrest took place not very far from Grahamstown. So he, he was very much an integral part of this university. And these are people that I, I, I looked up to, people who were a huge inspiration to us. Now I want, I want to be your tutor. I want to be your teacher. I want to walk with you. I want to be your parent and hold your hand to being a talk show host. I'm going to play a track. Yeah. A beautiful track from yourself. One of the songs in the playlist you sent me. And once it's done, I want you to outro the song. And what I mean by you need to outro the song, you say, who plays it? What's the name of the song? And what time is it? So you are a presenter. You are listening to Dr. Mabizi. I don't know that you may not use that name maybe when you get to an air. So there's someone calling. We'll do that after taking this call. Hi. And who am I speaking to and where are you calling from? From Grandstown. Okay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, what you would like to ask from uh, Dr. Sizo Mabizel? Um, what do you want to ask from Dr. Sizo Mabizel? Yeah, that, that, that's a very important question uh, because we, we are in the process of discussing the future of the name of the university. Um, you might know that council will deliberate on this on, uh, in November. Uh, if, if the decision is to change the name, uh, it, it would be quite appropriate for you or for anyone to uh, propose uh, that name. And by the way, uh, Oliver Tambo uh, is one person who made an incredible contribution to this country. Uh, he led the African National Congress for, for decades in, in exile. And um, he came back, and when he came back, he already had stroke. Uh, but under his leadership, the, the ANC, was an incredibly powerful organization. Um, and so it would not be a bad idea, should council decide to change the name, to put forward the name of uh, uh, OR. He, he was affectionately known as OR. I know this because when we were young in, uh, um, at university, we, we always listened to Radio Freedom. Okay. Uh, which was wow. bro which was broadcasting in uh, in Lusaka. Wow. So we would huddle around the uh, radio and uh, get to hear uh, some really inspirational messages from uh, from Lusaka. So Oliver Tambo is certainly one of those who made an incredible contribution, and it would be a fitting tribute uh, to name the university after him. Wow. The VC is not opposing. O Artambo University. Wow. Thank you for that call. Keep the calls coming. Right now, here's another one. People love you. <laughs> you <laughs> I, I, I do love them. By the way, I, I really love my students. Okay, let's take this one. Okay. Uh, running out of time. I hate that this show is one hour. Oh, no. Um, Dr. Mabiza, you are ready to be a talk show host. Gonna play this song? You say, who plays the song? What's the name of the song? And you give the time. I want you to try something new, and maybe they will get a resignation letter tomorrow to say, I'm going for radio presenting, no more vice chancellor. Sure, sure. Yeah, that, that's possible. It may happen. Yeah. Oh, to Nira. Wow. You, you have just heard uh, Mantra Manga Manga. Uh, played by played by Salala, and the time now is 18:50, 10 minutes to seven.
Wow. <laughs> okay, listener at home, everyone listening right now, you hear that. That's DJ Mabizela. <laughs> yeah. 20 May 2016, I wrote an article about you. It was called Mabizela Faced by New and Rolling Challenges. And I commented about several projects that I've witnessed myself since I came to Rhodes University in 2015. I've witnessed the FISMAS Fall of 2015. I've witnessed uh, at that time there was a protest going on against rape culture. I make several claims and substantiate them in that article, and I think you still remember it, do you? Yeah. Do you think, look at the history of Rhodes University, and ties to the question that was asked by one of the callers, Lunga, earlier on. Do you think you faced a lot of challenges more than any other vice chancellor that ever served at this university? Well, look, um, my predecessors had to deal with their own challenges. Um, I have to deal with those that uh, come up during my era. Um, they might not have faced the same kinds of challenges that I am dealing with. Uh, but look, I find this exciting. They, they are very important for me. I've already commented about the, the, the issue relating to rape culture, and we need to uproot that. Mm. And we have to work together to create a safe and secure environment for every student. The fears must fall. Uh, I must just make uh, this comment. I think universal fee-free education is a noble ideal to work towards. Um, and I think we, we, should, we should hold on to that ideal. But in the short to medium term, I hold the view that we must provide free education for the poor, that they shouldn't have to pay back anything. And of course, this has to be properly defined. I'm using the term free advisedly here yeah, because there is nothing that is free. But I think the state should provide uh, fully funded education for the poor, have a mechanism to assist the so-called missing middle, a combination of grant and, and uh, own contribution, and that those who can afford must pay. Okay. Uh, that is an important principle of free distribution. Uh, the very principle of social justice demands that we advantage those among us who are less advantaged. In a society where we have incredible inequalities, poverty at every turn, while we cannot provide free education for all, let's start by providing free education for the poor. That is eminently doable. And that is, and that is my stance on, on, fees, uh, on the issue of fees. Uh, should we work towards free education for all? Yes. But you see, our basic education is in such a lamentable state yeah. that it cannot be said that every young person has an equal opportunity to get to university. Mm. And so if we were to implement universal free education fact, at the moment, we would be further advantaging those who are already advantaged. Why should my daughter have her education paid for by taxpayers when I can afford to pay for her fees and the money that would have been used to educate my child can then be made available for a poor person. I think that that is, that is important for me. Social justice and redistribution is what we need at the moment. In the fullness of time, we might be able to afford free education for all. Yeah, I'm aware that on the 8th of October, you'll be turning uh, <laughs> 55. <laughs> 8th of October, it will be your birthday. So happy birthday in advance. Maybe on that day I'll call you or send a message. But five years from now, where do you see yourself? Look, um, wherever I will be, I will endeavor to make a difference. I, I might still be at Rhodes, I might be elsewhere, but rest assured that where I will be, I will be committed to creating a better society and a better world a more just, a more humane, a more equitable, a more inclusive, a more compassionate, a fairer society. Tell me of that one moment as the VC 
that you'll never forget? The one moment that I would never forget, because I've had so many moments in my life. Um, when I spent time with uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, that, that was just out of this world. Wow. Um, and so I will always treasure that. Uh, when, uh, <laughs> when I was in Cape Town and uh, Chris Ani was there, and arrangements for his security had to be made, and I was there with my car, and having to go through very quick training of, oh. ev of evacuation. Uh, that's, that's something that I will never forget. So there have been quite a number of things, yeah. Okay, let me read this WhatsApp message. Someone in, uh, is asking me to s ask you, what language do you dream in? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the last question. We are running out of time. I feel bad that we have to cut it off. That's a very good question. I, I don't know what language I dream in. Uh, I wouldn't say it's Zulu. Uh, <laughs> I, I won't say it's English. I have absolutely no idea. It's not Zulu. Are you sure it's not Zulu? I don't think it is Zulu. Well, look, it, it might it might depend on the nature of the dream. Um, in some instances, I might dream in Zulu. Uh, in others, I might dream in English. Yeah, I've never taken note. Wow, it's been nice having you. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you for your very kind uh, birthday wishes. Let me take this opportunity to wish our students well in their exams. We are two weeks away from exams. Uh, I wish them well and uh, I just want to assure each one of them that I care very deeply. I care very deeply for each and every one of our students. Uh, it hurts me at times when people say things which are far from the truth but I do care for each one of them and I do wish to support each one of them and make sure that they succeed. Uh, I've been very fortunate to uh, reach this stage and I therefore want to be of service to the future generation and please by all means you must know I have your back. You care. Thank you. That was the advice. Chancellor, the principal of Rhodes University. I'm Tobozani Laza, current affairs show producer and anchor. Let's meet again next week, Monday, if God allows. Thank you very much. I'm leaving you not alone, but I'm leaving you with presenters for Pa for Pa. Uh, this last song is Aret Aretha Franklin, ever changing time, featuring Michael Jackson. Okay, I love my job. Uh, it's been nice. I wish the show was more than an hour. I'm gonna take more calls. I'm gonna read all the SMSs and read all the WhatsApp messages. But unfortunately, we have to cut it off now. I love you. I love you. I love you. My name is Chochi Tozane, humble, broadcasting live at RMR 89.7. First of all, Steve Pico Building. Until we meet again.